All right, guys, so I learned a little bit in my last video that trying to show y'all how stuff shifts with the camera in my hand is not gonna work. So I got pretty smart here and I have set up my tripod. Um, and I'm gonna go through a little bit of an explanation here on the difference between synchronized and uh, face-plated transmissions or dog ring transmissions. Um, dog ring and face-plated transmissions are often interchanged, but the reality of it is a face-plated transmission means that they took a stock gear and they welded a dog ring to it, and so, or a faceplate, and then that's what, that's the reason they're called face-plated. Um, if you have a actual gear that is manufactured up front with that dog ring design, then that's what you'd consider to be a dog ring transmission. So, uh, a lot of your, you know, your NASCAR transmissions are dog ring. Uh, sequential transmissions are often dog ring, um, typically reserved for racing applications, really, because, and I'll explain why here in just a second, they're, they're not uh, user-friendly uh, in terms of comfort. So let's just start with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my uh, fifth, sixth assembly here and kind of give you an idea of how this works. So I, I know we talked about it in the previous video, but for a recap, if anybody did not watch the, uh, the Corvette T56 build, then I'll, I'll go through it here. So the way that this deal works is these teeth right here are all of the teeth that the slider hub right here engages. So this slider hub slides and it clicks onto those teeth and it, I know it seems like it rattles here, but when it's ever, whenever it's in use, there's so much junk in here that it doesn't really rattle around. And then what you also have is this slider hub that goes right here that the slider actually moves on. That thing is splined to the shaft. So that's, that's what's doing the work. So that's the transmission path, uh, the load path. You got gear to slider, slider to hub, hub to shaft, and this is all one unit that locks that up. The way that this works is this is called a blocker ring and the blocker ring has some teeth that match up spacing to these teeth on here and the way that it works is as you apply pressure to the slider here it will not mesh on those and it will actually press this brake pad material that's inside of here onto this cone and that's called your synchronizer cone it presses that like a brake pad until these this stuff all lines up just right and then click it goes into gear and so that's why sometimes it takes a second when you ask for a gear sometimes it takes a second to find it because all this stuff has to line up so it's not as fast as this 90 percent of you will look at this and see exactly why this is way faster um, but the way that this works is this would be a this would be a dual cone type setup um, if you have a, like a triple cone, there'll be a floater in here. The reason it's dual cone is because this is a cone and this is a cone. You got two cones to go together. If it was triple cone, there'll be another cone and you'd have two of these rings like we had in the Corvette video where that floater ring in the middle also has to be splined to the shaft, makes the assembly even more cumbersome and bulky to get together and works way better. So I'm not knocking it because it, it absolutely works better for slowing these gears down and making the mesh. So that's how this particular deal works. When it's all locked up, everything's peachy, right? But you saw how I had to fight it right there and even like get it all lined up and click into place. The other thing that happens and these is, actually this is pretty rough. I'm probably gonna have to touch this up if not replace it. But this particular ring a lot of times we'll take a beating right here and you can probably see how nubbed over all these are and i know from having driven this transmission that this particular trans had um fifth gear issues the so i'll show you this too this this is a new ring and it locks up really nice you press on it and you can't turn it i'm trying really hard the old ring which is just honestly it's just worn out it will go all the way to the back and you can still spin it like I'm pressing the same, I'm pressing harder and I can still spin this. What that means is this doesn't lock up on this anymore. And now 
that mesh really can't be made properly. You're gonna get teeth kind of kind of grinding. So basically what happened, what I'm getting at here is if you have a situation where you're trying to ask for gear and you have a high speed grind, then more than likely your blocker ring is just worn out, needs to be replaced. And the other part of that is you really need to do that sooner than later because if you spend a bunch of time grinding gears, even though you may think, oh, it's just a couple of teeth every time it goes in. Well, every time you're asking for that gear, you're taking some life off of it. So highly recommend when you start getting that, just suck it up, go ahead and change it. It locks up nicely. It's gonna be a, a good fix as long as my slider hub here, I might I might try to find another one of those. That's uh, it's pretty rough. The other thing you can do, um, especially on reverse, I think reverse might be the same size. That might be what I actually end up doing here is, so reverse only asks for a gear one direction, right? You don't have a, you don't have a two reverses. So if you ever have a reverse that's chewed up, you can flip it over and get away with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I've never actually checked this. I'm gonna do this live on camera. I'm gonna say that's the same. That is awesome news. So what I'll do is this side of this gear here uh, looks way better than this chewed up side that I have on this one. And uh, I probably will put this side towards maybe sixth and put, put this fresh side that's never seen a gear. We'll put it uh, put it on fifth since it's already gonna need a little bit of help on the gear side. So that'd be a really good option for us. Okay, let's talk about dog rings for just a second. They're very harsh and they're awesome. It's like the coolest thing ever. So the way that this deal works, you can see see how easy and free floating this uh, this slider is on this deal. The other thing is, this is what does your power transmission. Rather than all those little tiny teeth, this is what's doing the work. And so you have this massive engagement window to hit. So when this thing's going really fast and this thing's going really fast, all you have to do is just click it right into gear and it's gonna, this thing's spinning really fast and you just, it grabs it, right? These things are cut on a slight angle. You can probably see that in the video that there's a slight angle here so that once it's in and you're applying power, this thing will not want to come out. It's gonna be locked up into that thing. And then the other part is, the other side has the exact same thing. So when you're decelerating, it does the same thing. The only thing that you may run into is that these things like to float, so the shifter becomes very free. Uh, and that's a, a good thing in the sense that it's easy to shift the transmission. It's bad if you don't have a shifter that has a really strong centering mechanism or a transmission that has a strong centering mechanism because it'll want to clip these gears. And um, if you think grinding gears on that's bad, imagine catching this thing like this and clicking that thing off of there it's uh, it's it's awful, man. It sounds bad. It, it, it's not something I recommend doing. So, uh, one of the things that you can do here, same deal. If you flip these over, then the nice thing is is that you switch your your drive side and your coast side, so you can kind of somewhat refresh these. Uh, refresh is a bad word. You can extend the life of your sliders just a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, the way that this deal works. You know, you got these, these dog rings and you can kind of see that, that angle in there. Uh, hopefully I'm doing a good job of hitting that. And, uh, yeah, anyway, these things are, these things are awesome. I love face plated or dog ring transmissions. Um, they're so much fun to drive. Your wife will hate it unless she's a super duper car nerd and then she'll love it too. Um, but it's very harsh. The, the thud that you get going into gear is, uh, it's aggressive, um, but it's the price you pay for lightning shifts. I mean, this sucker will fall on the, it kind of sounds like that. It's like a very loud, very loud clunk. And uh, the other thing that you really have to do in order to drive the thing is you gotta keep it in a gear on the street. At least that's what I found. If you go to neutral and you lose you lose your mesh on all this stuff and everything is just spinning, sitting here spinning and doing its own little thing. You go to grab a gear and it is, it is, you either can't get it or it is the loudest clunk and it, it's like really harsh. So what I always do is if I'm in first, 
no problem, right? I'm in first, I'm good to go. And then if I'm in second, no problem, I'm good to go. If I'm in third, no problem. If I'm in fourth, no problem. If I need to go from fourth to first at a stoplight, I have to go four, three, two, one. Walk my way back down, just cluck, 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 cluck. No big deal. Uh, you just wanna make sure that if you wanna coast, you press the clutch in, you don't kick it into neutral. Uh, if you kick it into neutral, there's two options. Um, the, the main, the best option that you'd have is probably to try to rev match it. If you know, if you memorize the speed, say, you know, at 45 miles an hour and this certain RPM, I need to be in fourth gear. It's fairly easy to, to do that. And it won't be awful, but it's still going to be a really aggressive thud. Um, the other thing you can do is if you have a T56 and it's not like say a NASCAR four speed or something, uh, if you have a T56, and you have a synchronized fifth gear, you can always just go over and use that synchronizer to find fifth gear and then get you back into four, three, two, one, you're good. What I'll tell you is exactly what happened to my fifth gear is what's gonna happen to your fifth gear. You use that synchronizer so much because it's the only synchronizer you've got and you better believe it's gonna wear that thing out and then you're gonna start uh, having to maintenance that uh, blocker ring more often. But anyway, uh, I wanted to do this video because I said I would do this video. Of course, the video uh, that, or the transmission I should have videoed is this one right here because it came apart like a dream. Um, my fifth, sixth uh, gear here that goes on the main shaft came off exactly like it's supposed to. I pulled it off with a puller, but it was not ungodly difficult. It was just tight. And that's fantastic because that means that when I go to put this thing back on, I've got good splines on my, main, my new main shaft got good splines on this gear uh, and we're in good shape uh, I do have one little chip in this thing but we are gonna let that eat because this thing is in good shape so okay I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this trans back together um, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll set up a uh, maybe I'll set up a, the camera and do a time-lapse of it just going back together and so we can have a chance to look at how this one goes together these are actually a little trickier to put together because these things are so free. You go to stand the thing up and it wants to just fall to the bottom. Both of them try to fall to the bottom. And uh, it actually makes it really difficult to get the, the shift rail guide pins in, uh, at least in my opinion. So if somebody has a tip or a trick for that, I wouldn't mind hearing it. Um, haven't really found a good way other than just keep fiddling with it until it, uh, until it works. So. All right, I'm gonna get to it. Thanks for hanging with me. Um, we're good with everything except for the, uh, the tail shaft housing. And uh, I gotta get that machined to accept the larger larger main shaft here. So uh, I got a buddy in town that we're gonna toss that in and get it uh, bored out so I can put a larger bushing in and run a larger slip yoke to, to run this shaft. And uh, that's what the whole job was about is upgrading the main shaft and going from a 27 spline to a 30 spline so we can party just a little harder um so yeah I, honestly I, the thing actually went together really well um of course like i said I, I didn't film it coming apart but at least i filmed it put going back together is probably one of the smoothest that i've had and maybe that's just because i've done three of these and this is the third and the final and that means that i'm gonna be done and i'll forget how to do it but um all good Hope you enjoyed watching that. Um, hope it's a, a little bit informative and, and uh, know the difference between synchronized and faceplated and or, or dog ring and um, yeah. Everybody have fun, go fast. Till next time.